Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, it's more Azure DevOps and ServiceNow. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to skip the backlog and automatically get an incident over to Azure DevOps without adding it to your backlog, without using a triage board. And we're going to use Flow Designer to make all that happen. So in the previous video, I'll link to it up above if you haven't seen it. I basically go into the triage board and I grab an incident add it to the backlog and it automatically syncs that over to Azure DevOps. And believe it or not, for some people that's still not good enough. They want the, an agent, someone who's managing an incident like a service desk agent or a customer service person to be able to create an incident and it automatically go over to that team. And you can do it and never have to go into this Agile backlog. And we're going to do that using Flow Designer. So in Flow Designer, I have a flow here. I'm going to swing this open just a little bit. I've got Azure DevOps open in the background, but we'll get to that in a second. First thing I've done in this is I've said, hey, if there's an incident created in ServiceNow and the state is not closed, resolved, or canceled, and the assignment group is my Agile development team or my Azure DevOps development team, here we've got ServiceNow sprinters, then this flow will automatically execute, right? So you can set up whatever conditions you want here. It doesn't have to be like I did it. It could be P1 incidents. It could be stuff that affects a particular service or a CI. You are the master of what you set for your conditions. But once you do, then all you have to do is create a story record. And when we create that story record, we can use the fields on the incident in order to populate that story record. So look what I did here. I have assignment group, short description, and parent, if I use my right annotation tool, um, already set and populated using information about the incident. So let's take a look at the incident record. I have in the incident record a short description. So there is my short description. I just drag that over and that automatically populates the story short description. I also have a description which is right here. I drag that over and it populates the description. And I want to go ahead and set the parent of this to the incident number. So I just grab the incident record and set the parent of the story to the incident record. That that binds and connects the story and the incident together so they show up correctly if someone were to go look in that backlog. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and sync the story with Azure DevOps. Now I'm using a custom action here. Stay tuned for a future video. I'll show you how easy it is to make this custom action. It's not a big deal at all. But we're basically just saying, go ahead and sync that even though we're creating this in a workflow. Otherwise, it wouldn't actually sync it because it thinks it might get stuck in a loop. So we had to create this special custom action here. Then once that's done, we're going to go update the incident record and set the correlation display and correlation ID to the, what got created in JIRA. So when we sync it over to JIRA, we get back um, the number and the sys ID, and we're just going to go ahead and sync those things. Actually, is that, I think this is syncing the story. Sorry, I, I misspoke there. So when we use this update incident record, we're updating the incident to be aware of the story. When we created the story, we made the incident record the parent, but now we're going to tell the story that it has a related record in the incident by updating the correlation display and correlation ID. So what we do is we just grab it from that story record. I'll just show you here. We've got the story number, which is just the number field. Uh, if I scroll down here, we drag that over, that sets the number or the correlation display, what people see, and the ID is going to be the sys ID of that record for the story. So I'll just scroll down here, there is a sys ID, and we drag it in there. So that's those two things, and then we'll just go ahead and be nice, let people know that there's some automation going on in the background, and we'll say that this story number has been created and assigned to the assignment group name for ServiceNow Sprinters. Really, really clean there, and now we have a flow that is what? four steps in order to automatically skip that backlog activity that we showed in the previous video. So let's get to it. Let's go to incidents and show you how easy this is to do. I'll just pull up all my incidents and I'll just go to, I think it's incident.list. That'll get me there faster. That's the table name uh, of the incident table instead of looking for the menu item. I'm just going to create new and we'll go ahead and swing this window back over so that we can see Azure DevOps over here on the right when we create that incident over here in ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and set the short description incident in ServiceNow for ServiceNow sprinters and the YouTube. We want to make sure this is just for you guys. Incident. Um, auto sync example 
And remember, the only thing that's really important is we need to set that assignment group, um, which I'm not seeing. Someone's got a weird form on here. Uh, oh, I'm in the service operations workspace form. Let's go ahead. Uh, I don't know how I got in that view. You know what I did? Um, let's go, because I don't have, I can't set the, oh no, here's assignment group. Okay, we'll go ahead and set the assignment group there. It's just a little bit different than I was expecting, but that's okay. Um, all right, so we got all that. Yeah, and you could do all this from the Surface Operations workspace. You don't have to do it here. Um, I don't have the caller. We'll set Abraham Lincoln as the caller, and now I'll save. And that is automatically gonna run that flow, or that workflow in the background, create the story associated with it, add a work note. If we scroll down here, we should see uh, wherever the work notes are. I'm not sure, is it gonna show, do I have work notes in this view? I don't have work notes in the service operations workspace view. Let's go to uh, default view and we should see uh, the work or the comments. I think we did additional comments or work notes, I can't remember. Um, there we go. And there it is, story 0010029 has been created just like our workflow is supposed to do. So now if we come up here to Azure DevOps, I'm just gonna click on there and we should see that issue or story automatically come through. I'm not seeing it yet, so let's scroll down, make sure I don't have multiple pages here. There it is, incident and service. I don't know why the last time I did that too. Incident and service now for ServiceNow Sprinters and the YouTube. We'll just go ahead and add a comment here. Uh, we see it and are on the case to fix. And that's how easy it could be to communicate with those teams that are using Azure DevOps and get information to them and back into ServiceNow very quickly without ever having to use a backlog or a triage board like I showed in my previous video. We should see that comment come over here in a second um, to our, not our incident, but actually our story. So I don't have story showing here, so I'll tell you what, you're gonna see something new. We're just gonna configure a related list on this default view and we're gonna add stories so that we see those show up at the bottom list there. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this view and we'll scroll down to the S's where we should see story. Um, and I want the parent to be that. So we have parent set as the story, or the story has its parent value set to the incident um, when we set up our workflow. So if we scroll down here and look at stories now, there's our story for ServiceNow Sprinters, and we can open that up and see that that work note should have come through where we see it and are on the case to fix. It's that easy. And you know what? I really feel obligated now that I got tied up into that Service Operations Workspace view. Let's go ahead and hop over to Service Operations Workspace. I wasn't planning on showing you this, but uh, I want you to see that we can do all that and see all that from within these new workspaces. We don't have to be in the regular UI. Here's my service operations workspace. We'll just hop over to my list view. And basically I wanna pull up all my incidents and we should be able to see that come through. So there's incidents. We'll just go open uh, because we did create that new incident and that should show all the open incidents. There we go, it pulled up. You can actually see it there, Incident and Service Now for ServiceNow Sprinters and the YouTube. Um, so no different here, just a different user interface to look at what an incident looks like. And uh, that's it. We should be able to look at related records and see maybe the story without having to do much work. I'm actually not sure. I didn't test this out before <laughs> before I uh, recorded. I wasn't planning on using Service Operations Workspace. Um, yeah, it doesn't show up here, but that's just something we configure in the workspace. We can have those stories show up. So don't fret, um, that's definitely doable. But um, if you still needed to create an incident and assign it to the ServiceNow support team, uh, ServiceNow Sprinters team, you can do that from here. So I'm just gonna do it and roll with it. Uh, here's the uh, new incident from SOW for the YouTube and uh, demo from SOW. And then we just need to set the, oh, we need to set the caller again. Let's grab all of your hand, Lincoln, and let's set the assignment group. And this is the key thing, right? The assignment group is really what's filtering and doing all that. So I'll hit save there, and that should automatically create that. And then we should see in the work notes show up here live, um, unlike we did in the other view where I had to change views and everything. We should, see, oh no, we're not gonna see it here because it's on the story record, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Um, we'll get down there. We see a new incident from, S from SOW for the ServiceNow Sprinters group. And I'm just gonna go back to my work items here. And um, let's just see here. Click there, and last time I had to scroll down and scroll up, and then it showed up. I don't know if that's an Azure DevOps bug, but uh, you see it worked. New incident from SOW for the YouTube, and now those two things are syncing back and forth. So that's incident automation using a flow in Flow Designer to synchronize incidents in ServiceNow with 
issues in Azure DevOps. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in integrating ServiceNow and Azure DevOps. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.